I'm in Lidington in um, in Swindon. Uh, I'm in Lidington, south of Swindon, in in Wiltshire. Uh, I'm in an Iron Age fort called Lidington Fort. Uh, just at the bottom of the hill is uh, Badbury, um, Badbury, which um, in uh, Old English times was um, uh, Badbury. Um, I came here, I came up here last last week um, to the other hill just across the valley, which is Barbary Hill. And that's also an Iron Age fort, but I don't think it's well. Def I mean, it's beautiful. Um, but I don't think it's as well defended as this one. Um, this is just across the valley, and that's one of the reasons why, I've, uh, you know, we've got two Iron Age hill forts in, in the same uh, valley, at the head of the same valley, uh, and it just goes to, sh you know, I wanna, I'm going to come back here for a few more. So what you've got, um, the reason why I say this is uh, better defended is because on the flat top of the, um, the hill, the Iron Age hill is uh, the fort is on on one end, so it's well defended all around the the, the slopes of the hill. Uh, but on the flat top, it's got a really good wall, a uh, really strong wall, really really steep um, uh, and deep, and uh, even a, an unfit um, uh, town within here could defend it against marauders. Whereas Barbary doesn't quite um, do that. And another thing, um, well, it doesn't present such a strong force on the top of, um, on the on the top of the hill to to its rear. But the um, another reason I'd, I'd, I'm going to come back here is um, there are several um, uh, Anglo-Saxon charters that over that uh, fit together like a jigsaw, but slightly overlap because they've got slightly different. Um, boundaries. Well, they seem to. It's very hard to interpret boundaries sometimes, uh, but it gives us a lot of information. So um, we have uh, to the right of me um, a small stream called the the Medbourne, uh, and Medbourne um, Coombe is mentioned in one of the charters, and that is definitely an English name. Um, so that was given by um, the English when they came here. So. This fort was built somewhere between 400 BC and the first century AD. The Anglo-Saxons came here from about 450 onwards, probably a bit later here. But they gave that stream uh, the name um, uh, Medderburner or something like that, um, which means the mead, the mead is, is land, flat land next to a river that you grow hay on to feed your animals over winter, to keep them alive over winter. Very important to a community. And these, this land, that land was held in common by uh, the English. It's sort of like a proto-communism uh, idea. The whole community needs to survive, so we're going to hold that land in common. Um, and burn, obviously, is, is stream. Um, so that's definitely an English named stream, but its neighbour is called in slightly different things in, in the different charters. Uh, Dorkin, Dortina, things like that. But you've got this Dork, Dor, um, were um, part at the beginning, and it's not English. It's not. Um, it's not a Germanic name, and that's one of the joys. It's an absolute joy for me um, to work out. Um, well, I'm not. I'm standing on the shoulders of giants, like GB Grundy. But it, it, it's a real joy to me to sort of, you know, to be able to read the what what are probably names given in the pre-English past. So. The British, the, the what became the Welsh, um, called it that, uh, or something similar to that, uh, and so we're looking deep into the past. And the, the, certainly, the Welsh certainly have the right to to show continuity back to the Iron Age, you know, from about two thousand five hundred BC onwards. Um, that's probably that you know a form of a proto form of Welsh was spoken from from then on in in Britain. Um, and it's nice. So river names very often have the, uh, the English allowed when they came here. They said, "Oh yeah, you can carry on calling it that. We're not going to change it." Yeah. So Avon, all the all the rivers in in Britain called Avon and America. Avon are, Avon means river in Welsh. And you've got the uh, the Severn um, near here between uh, going through the middle of Gloucestershire. That is um, in Welsh is the Hafren, and the Romans called it the Sabrina. And seven is sort of like halfway between English and and Welsh, 
and there's loads of there's loads of others uh Kooniglan, and there's so there's several river colmes um which in in one of the anglo-saxon charts i've seen is is Kooniglan. um it's probably that's probably older um probably you know almost definitely is older than the english but that's one of the joys of coming to places like this and saying yeah that river i know its ancient name but uh, but anyway, yeah, I should be coming back here here again. It's it's a uh, it's a uh, quite a an interesting and um, thrilling thrilling place uh, t- uh, to be. When you get, I mean, it, it really um, enlivens a walk when you're able to say that barrow over there that was called the the maiden's barrow, you know, fifteen hundred years ago, and and it nobody calls it that now but we know it definitely was called, you know. And that's really, really interesting. I would also mention this is known as Lidington Fort. My theory is the parish boundaries changed because at the bottom, at the very foot of this hill, um, is Badbury. And then there's a boundary between it and, and this fort. And, and the Bury part of uh, Badbury means fort, earthen fort. Um, a, 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 a fortified enclosure. Uh, so I think, you know, it's sort of Occam's razor. It's far more likely than not that Badbury was named after this fort, in which case this fort was called Badbury 1500 years ago. But there you go. Um, but it, it's, it, it, you know, I may be wrong, but um, we, we start to make up stuff. Um, when we think that we haven't got enough evidence, but I, you know, it, you know, it looks to me. We'll, we'll, we'll see. Uh, well, no, we won't ever see. This is a, this is the problem. But that's my theory. And anyway, this is my walk, and I'll. Um, I hope you enjoy it.